It's not recording. Okay, it started to record. Okay. So if you look at the screen, it's basically the topic is on material management. Okay. So the second business process that we're going to be discussing for this subject. Before this, you already learned sales and distribution where you are selling something and distributing something. For this case, for your lab exercise is GBI, Global Buy Incorporated, where you are selling bike and you're making money out of it. And you are delivering the bike to your customer. Now, for today, we will be discussing on material management. Now, material management, this is the part where we're going to be involved with purchasing. Purchasing of material. This is a business process where we're going to be using the company's money to purchase something. During sales and distribution, money is coming in into GBI, into your company. Now, material management will be a business process where money is going out and items or materials are coming in. This is the process where the financial impact is basically money is going out of the company and goods are basically coming in inside the company. Your stock is being increased your money is being decreased. Okay. So, this is a 2018, nothing important here. The author, the learning objective. Okay, now we're going to go through here. Okay, learning objective, purchase to pay. Before this was order to cash. So, we are currently in the process of purchase to pay. Purchase, pay for the goods. We're going to see the organizational level of how we're going to be executing the purchase process. Or, I would like to use, please take note of this jargon, procurement. Okay, uh, do a quick search on your own on how procurement is being spelled and what does it mean. But basically, it's another word that is the same meaning with purchase you buy something okay and then we're going to be discussing on create material master record this is the essence of sap material master record master data just like what you have done in sales and distribution sales and distribution the master data that you have created is customer what is the name of the customer that you have created the bike zone Okay, in terms of here, material master is something that you're going to be using overall in all the business process. Even sales and distribution uses material master. Okay, now question, I'm, and I'm going to pick this uh, pick student for answering this question. Okay, now this question is not basically you must know the answer you have to guess the answer because i'm not there yet okay now there are two material master data that you have involved with during the sales and distribution process can you name me the two material master data that you have involved with mohsin are you there yes sir Okay, so what are the two material that you have involved with during the sales and distribution lab exercise? Have a guess. Bike. Bike, okay. In much more detail? Professional bike. Yes. Professional bike. Professional and another one? Anyone else? Or you anyone else that would like to jump in also? No problem. One is professional. Another one? Deluxe. Deluxe. Okay. So basically, okay, thank you. Okay, Mosin. Okay, now those are the two material 
master data that you have already involved with that is deluxe touring bike and professional touring bike both of them are black okay so if you notice the material master data that you have used in sales and distribution when you use that two codes dxtr and prtr all the different data are being pumped in into your sales order such as the weight of the item the pricing of the item so this is where we will create that master data during your lab exercise you're going to be creating a master data if i'm not mistaken you're going to be creating a master data called knee pad okay everyone knows where uh, what is a knee pad for bicycle and where is it being worn for a person hopefully you can imagine that okay afterwards we're going to be discussing on vendor master data there is a situation where a vendor a newly vendor okay now this is different before this during sales and distribution a customer approach you so they want to buy something now vendor master is basically you are advertising that you want to buy something but you are not sure who is selling it so you're going to be approaching a few vendors but currently here you're going to be create one vendor but uh, inside the system there are already a few vendors that is already been created so basically this part here you'll be creating a vendor master data inside the system okay some of the specific data we're going to see purchase requisition okay now we're going to try to see this from the point of view of comparing sales and distribution and also material management process because currently almost similar similar steps but the terms that are being used are different and then you have purchase order so if you're not mis uh, if i'm not mistaken you also have involved something with a different name inside sales and distribution with the word order now we, i'm going to ask in terms of this item here inside material management you see the term purchase order now in types uh, in the exercise of sales and distribution is being called what order anyone can jump in sales order sales order yes correct inside the sales and distribution you are involved with a document called sales order sales order is where you already confirm that you're going to buy uh, that the customer is going to buy from you with that specific list of items and services for purchase order this will basically confirm that you're going to be purchasing from which vendor in terms of what are the goods and what are the services that you're going to be purchasing from that vendor post good receipt now this is also another term inside sales there is also something called good something here good receive which means that you are receiving the goods just to confirm uh, basically is a process that confirms that the goods has arrived at your company and you have received the goods in sales and distribution why is it being called good something what is that something issue yes correct good issued which means that you have uh, you have confirmed that during sales that the items already reached the customer now during material management that is purchasing or procurement we are going to confirm that the goods are already at the warehouse you have received the goods okay and then we're going to have a look at some detail not detail some brief information regarding warehouse structure okay now this is the part where i need to mention to you earlier because currently i have changed a little bit of a little bit on column so basically i changed the structure of which lecture that you're going to be seeing during the earlier week of this semester because currently for us after sales it would be easier for you to see material management 
sales and then purchasing and then the next chapter or next week we're going to be discussing directly to warehouse because uh, it's much more it will make much more sense when you see sales purchasing and inventory earliest at the earliest time as possible because those three are quite um uh, quite significant with each other okay and then you will perform put way which means that you're going to keep the item inside your warehouse now this is also another another thing in sales and distribution you have another term here currently here inside material management you have put away now inside sales and distribution you have Okay, before this, it was easier. Goods, receipt, good issue, purchase order, sales order. Now, put away. Inside material management, uh, you're going to put away the item. But inside sales and distribution, why is it being called? Anyone? Delivery. No, not there. Can you have a guess? yes pick item so notice there is this antonym between the purchasing and also the sales process no okay so here you put away the item you keep it inside your warehouse but inside sales you pick it up you're going to send it out okay now enter an invoice so you're going to be uh, invoicing the vendor payment and then there are integration points between purchase to pay. That is why we have to basically go through for this kind of business process. Okay, now, so functionality is basically we are at purchasing. It's going to be involved with some of these functionalities, but we're going to have a look at it later. But for now, we're going to have a look at purchasing. Okay so you need overview innovation of s4 hana i can skip 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 now this is the part where we're going to be discussing on the core essence of material management okay we are at slide 16. okay now these are some of the information that we're going to be involved with when talking about material management we're going to be involved with client data company code data plan data storage location data okay now storage location data in short is going to be s log plan is going to be plan company code is going to be company code client is going to be client okay now if you notice now i'm going to be asking question if you notice this is basically not you know it's basically a guessing game now if you notice during your lab exercise which plan did you use inside sales and distribution did anyone here notice the plan data that you use you can give me the location or the code of the plan itself when you do sales and distribution mi00 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 representing what data? Miami. Yeah. Yes, Miami. There is also another data, another plan that can also be used. SD00. SD stands for? Anyone? This is all guessing games. SD. Not sales and distribution. It's SD00. MI00. MI is for Miami. SD00. SD is for? Anyone would like to go? Guessing? None. I'm not hearing anything. Or maybe someone will mention this inside the chat. MI00 Miami. Okay. SD00? No one? Anyone? None. San Diego. Ah, someone. Okay, San Diego. Correct okay san diego okay correct okay currently i'm on dual screen so i can go through the chat for anyone who is responding to my question okay 
so those are some of the things that we're going data that we're going to be involved with okay company code uh, common is going to be either us 00 or the one that is in germany to only two different location in terms of company code but plan they are in total seven or six i'm not sure you can we going to be going through that data purchasing all basically which department and also purchasing group here you won't be able to see or try to understand on what are basically this thing means when you go through the data you can basically explore or basically see what is the live data uh it's not live data what is the real world case data that is related to purchasing or purchasing group so <coughs> you can try to formulate your own understanding of what does those data mean why does you need those data inside sap and how it plays its role in terms of the material management process okay now here's the thing okay so basically there are seven dallas san diego miami heidelberg hamburg so five in total so company at, at best client is goes uh, basically the highest level of data that is gbi company code that is either GBI incorporate uh, sorry GBI incorporated and also global by Germany and then plan you have either Dallas San Diego and Miami now have a guess San Diego was SD00 Miami was MI00 Dallas have a guess what is the plan code DA? No, it's not DA. <laughs> it's DL00. Or is it DS00? But, but if I'm not mistaken, or, or is it really correct DA00? You can try to confirm on it later. Okay, so the different materials type that are being assigned to each of the plant. If you notice here, Dallas have raw materials, semi-finished good, finished good, miscellaneous. San Diego can only have trading goods, finished goods, and miscellaneous. Trading goods, finished good, miscellaneous. So basically, these are the things here. Now, if you notice, why does Dallas has raw material? San Diego and Miami doesn't have raw material. Why does that is showing here inside this structure can anyone have a guess why does dallas have raw material san diego doesn't miami doesn't have a guess i didn't ask you to answer i just asked you to guess anyone uh, because dallas has the factory of the material factory which means that is going to have different functions yes dallas will be a plant where they're going to be producing something that is why it has raw material for san diego and miami they are not producing anything they are just more like a distribution center for dallas there is a location within that plant where they're going to assemble something to make something maybe dallas will be making the bicycle san diego and miami doesn't make bicycles so that is why you have this kind of you have this kind of different structure in material management okay so these are the different data that you can play around eg00 fg00 mi00 uh so notice here for dallas these are the things that you can use mi00 here okay do not be mistaken this mi00 is not basically mi00 here this is not the same item so have a guess this one is miami this one is yes correct that is a code for miscellaneous but why is it being shown this way in terms of our our case company that is gbi i'm not sure this is how it's being structured you can have redundancy but is it a good practice no for me no 
people might be mistaken when using the system they want to insert miscellaneous but they inserted miami on different situation depends okay so what's the difference here why is this green and why is this gray we're going to have a look at it later uh, there is toronto there is perf hmm. i'm guessing that for this part here if you notice this green part and this gray part this is the part where it is not being handled through sap system this is being handled manually if i'm not mistaken for the rest that you see is being handled through sap now purchasing op is us00 if you notice us00 is what is company code purchasing group north america basically the north america purchasing department will be handling any purchasing that is going through the united states for german is e oh, uh, e00 okay uh, you can go through this thing or basically you can go through all the details during your lab exercise you can basically see the details data you you can just input the data but if you are curious you can just use the help that is inside sap for viewing the different kind of data and what it is it representing okay now we're going to the first part of the data that you're going to be involved with okay notice here i'm going to mention it again inside sap there are three different type of data that is being used throughout sap now name me those three what are those three different data Dif three different type of data now this is a question not a guessing game you already know this what are those three different type of data anyone this data yes uh, can you repeat that sales data and accounting uh no not not that one the three different type of data okay Nurin. okay Nurin already answered organizational the next one is master and the final one is transactional data those are the three different type of data that you're going to be in, you're going to be involved with when you are doing sap but the only data that you are creating is basically master and transactional you cannot really uh, we are not creating any organized organizational data during the lab exercise for this subject so for this one here, we are creating vendor master data. This is data that you're going to be used, that is going to be used again and again during future transaction. Okay. Well, basically, the content of vendor master data is the business uh, information of that external supplier. External supplier, which means that there is the vendor. For purchasing and accounting purposes, and you must uh one time vendor possibility every vendor must have a master record so basically this part here the reason why you must have vendor master data is that during the future purchases you can refer back to that vendor master data so to see basically their you know, what item that you have purchased from the vendor how did they deliver your purchase are they delivering it on time what is the pricing so some of the data that is inside vendor master data we will be seeing later okay so you're going to have address vendor number this is generated by the system communication you contact your vendor either through email through uh, your traditional mail through phone through whatsapp through electronics um communication method depends um, company code which accounting that will be used for doing this payment and then what kind of term of payment that you are doing with the vendor is it that 
after the item is there, you need to complete the payment immediately or you can have scheduled payment. Um, after the item is already there, you need to pay within the first week of the within the first week of the delivery date, for example. And also you need to see in the bank account. Purchasing currency, the salesman name, and the vendor partners. So these are some of the data that you're going to be involved with. So here is either US00, D00, not really important. Okay, now where does this data is being used? So notice here sales, material management, production, plan maintenance, accounting, controlling, quality management is being used like 80% of your SAP function. 70% or maybe more of the SAP functions for your company will be utilizing the master data. For now, you have already used the material master inside sales and now you're going to be using it inside material management. And then later, you're going to be using it inside warehouse management, finance, that one we're going to be seeing it later during the course of this semester. Material master is being called in a function segment called view, not really that important, but currently here is one example. So you see here the material code DXTR1000. Why is it for? Deluxe touring bike, black. Okay. If you were to basically, let's say, for example, order a different color of Deluxe Touring Bike, it's going to be DXTR for this ID, uh, for this here. Let's say, for example, for ID Learn-278. Okay, we're going to stick with 278. 278 is basically going to see here DXTR1278. That is for black. But if you want to go with a different color, it's going to be DXTR2. 278. The one here at the front is basically representing the color. Now, to men, I'm going to mention here that code that you see, DXTR1000, that is user defined. What kind of formatting that you use, what kind of standard that you're going to be use, that will be on your management, on, on the management side of the company because currently in terms of SAP, they're going to be making this as universal as possible. So what code that you're going to be inserting here depends on how you define. Let's say here is DX, Deluxe, TR Touring, one color, Z, triple zero at the back is for the user who is initiating the material. So that is how it is, depends. Base of unit measurement, each material group is bikes, division is BI, bicycle. So those are the different information, gross weight, net weight, volume. If you see here, basic data one, basic data two, sales or there is going to be a lot of data that is needed to be inserted when you create material master. Why? Because this is the core of your business. This is what you are selling. This is what that is making money for your company. So in order to ensure that business is running smoothly, every single data is being integrated for each of the different business process inside the company, there must be something that is laying out the groundworks or basically the foundation for your company. For now, it's basically this material master data is going to be used again and again and making sure that when you use it inside sales, it will automatically extract all the different data that is needed for that sales transaction so that you don't need to input data again and again during future sales transaction similar with purchasing. And now, during Material Master View, these are some of the things that you're going to be seeing when you create a Material Master. So you notice here, it's basically going to have a lot of users. You're going to have forecasting data, material planning, purchasing, storage, quality, accounting, controlling. So what does this thing mean basically? It's been used everywhere. 
and also the purpose of those data are being shown here. So let us see. This is a guessing game again. So forecasting. What is the function of Material Master toward forecasting data? Anyone here would like to have a guess? Can either answer through the chat or through your microphone? Oh, shipping. Shipping. Okay, not really correct, but it's related to shipping. Something that is also related to shipping, but not in that. It's indirectly, not directly. Now, can anyone here define to me what does the word forecasting means in a simple word, simple term? What does yes. forecasting mean? Yes. Expected sales. Expected sales. Okay. Other guess what does forecasting means? Expect to say is yes, it's somewhat forecasting. But try to go through something that is much more how to say much more simple. What does forecasting really mean? For, just forecasting, not inside a context of SAP. History, predict, estimate, budget. Those are some of the comments inside the chat. The word that I'm going to be using is predict. So in terms of your daily life, now daily life, throughout what you have currently have gone through throughout the past, let's say 20, 23, 21, 22 years of your life, when did you ever seen or heard the word forecasting or weather. forecast yes weather weather forecast so basically to, to make things much more e simpler easier forecasting means predict so in terms of material master here in terms of when you see here in terms of forecasting data it means that you want to predict when you need to buy more stuff let's say for example now we are in the business of global buy incorporated for this year 2021 forecasting data for bicycle for this year are you going to buy a lot of bikes are you going to be demanding a lot of bikes for last year yes suddenly the trend of riding bicycles and working out with bicycles is becoming a trend but the thing is it's already being like it's trending and it died out it's trending and then it died out so last year and this year it is trending so forecasting data are you supposed to be buying a lot more bikes this year guessing No. Yes or no? no? For this year, maybe no. no. No, because currently it's already trending last year. Okay, for let's say for example, in the situation of Malaysia, will you be buying more bikes next year? COVID. Could be, no, no, but currently, no. <laughs> it's not yes. So when are you going to be preparing more bikes for your company in Malaysia? Give me a time frame. Dalam masa berapa lama? How, when will be your next big purchase? Have a guess. Hopefully no one types. Okay, after MCO, it's not really that bad. Hopefully, no one right in the chat. The next pandemic, we're going to buy more bikes. No, please, no more pandemics, please. Okay. So, basically, for the next, maybe, okay, because currently, okay, buy, uh, buy for my children, okay. Currently, uh, children, uh, uh, okay, now, okay. Maybe in terms of Malaysia, I'm noticing that within another five years, maybe 10 years, 
is going to be a trending a trend again. We have the tendency here in Malaysia is that <clears throat> it's going to be trending for one or two years, and then it's going to die off. And then another thing is going to be trending after that, and it's going to die off again. And then another thing is going to be trending again, and it's going to uh, die off again. Like you see in terms of business businesses, if you notice, there is that gym booming. Suddenly, there is a lot of gym opening throughout Malaysia, right? It's a trend. And then suddenly, there is this bubble, this bubble trend a few years back. And now, it's basically boba. I'm not sure what's the difference between bubble and boba, but currently, it's a different trend. So this is what forecasting is. For example, forecasting when you want to buy the things for future, not uh, not for short term, but for long term, a much more longer time frame. Material planning is basically for a much more shorter period. Storage data is where is the item is being kept. Quality is basically on quality of the uh, quality control of the material itself. Accounting related to monetary matter to that material. Okay, so this is some of the data that is inside a material master. So, purchasing info can be created manually, automatically. Okay, now in terms of purchasing information, it's being going to be done through requisition, quotation, and purchase order. Now, we are going through the core process of material management here. Now, allowing buyers to quickly determine which vendor. So these are some of why those information is being uh, given or basically needed to be inserted inside a material master. Because currently, just to, uh, in terms of how is it being done, we're going to go through it during the process part. Okay, this is still talking about material master now we are going in into the process itself. This is not really showing the 100% process or steps that you're, not, that you're going to be going through inside the lab exercise, but this is basically some sort of overview. Okay, it started with purchase requisition and then purchase requisition, vendor selection, purchase order. Notify vendor, vendor shipment, good receipt, invoice receipt, and payment to vendor. Just to keep things simple, these are the, the, in general, the steps that you need to go through when you want to purchase something at a company or basically at an organizational level. Now, in terms of here, it started with purchase requisition. Now, what purchase requisition is, is basically, if you have some sort, okay, I don't have, um, I'm not sure if I can basically edit through here. I can, uh, it's not edit, I can, uh, I can doodle something on this part here, but currently um, that I and that function still, I haven't explored yet. Okay, but hopefully everything would be clearer in terms of this recording session. Now, it started with purchase requisition. Purchase requisition is basically a request for purchase. Now, this is something that is also a step that is being done inside sales and distribution. Here, inside material management or purchasing or procurement, we start with purchase requisition, which means that there is a request for purchasing. From where does it come from? Usually, it comes from the warehouse department which means that usually they notice the stock is running low and you need to be restocking on certain item let's say for example finish good item okay finish good item the item is basically running low so a purchase requisition is being raised which means that the warehouse staff are telling the people at the purchasing department that hey we are running low on bicycles can you start purchasing some bicycles 
so that we can make sure that the stock is enough or there is adequate stock for the sales department to sales bicycle. No, it's not request for purchase, it's requisition here. Okay, purchase requisition. Okay, so basically, yes, it's uh, in another word, yes, it's correct. Request for purchase. You are requesting a department to purchase something. If you look at the chat, uh, Farahin Zukifli mentioned request for purchase. Yes, uh, in another word, in a much more simpler, simpler term, purchase requisition. Yes, it's request for purchase. Uh, um, okay. Uh, but we don't uh, don't stick with this term. Eh? It's just for your own understanding. We are not. Um, uh, we are not using this term inside SAP. We're going to uh, stick with the term purchase requisition. Okay, a request for purchasing. Okay, after request for purchasing, you need to see basically from where you can buy it now what happens here between purchase requisition and vendor selection this is the part where this is happen or basically you try to imagine it happen okay let's say for example we we go through a much more simpler process um should okay now i give it uh, this i let you to decide how are we going to be explaining the procure to press uh, procure to pay process? Okay, now, mana satu lagi senang? Explain all the process first, and then go through the situational as a student to buy something or concurrent, which is requisition. How? What is the real case? Vendor selection. What is the real case? Purchase order. What is the real case? Uh, which one would you prefer? The first option or the second option? First. First, eh? Okay. Anyone here would like to go with the second option? Second. I do, second. Me, second. Okay. Uh, when the, okay. Second, first. Okay. And now. Mm. Hmm, I think small amount, okay. Let us try, okay, I mean, this is going to be inside the recording, so basically you can review back. Can we try with option one first? So basically I'm going to explain to you how is it going to be done, and afterwards we're going to try to relate it with what is your, uh, basically what are your daily experience in terms of procure to pay, okay, something uh, that is supposed to be much more simpler. Okay, now, but it's going to be related to e-commerce. Now, purchase requisition. Uh, request for purchasing, which means that it's executed because someone requested to purchase something. Okay, from there, you're going to know what are the things that needed to be purchased, how much is the amount, where is it going to be stationed at. Depends. If it's a new item, then you need to define where is it going to be stationed? Ah, okay, no, you don't need to define that. It's already inside the material master. Hmm. Okay, so no need to go there. Purchase requisition, somewhere initiated, you know what to buy. Vendor selection, you need to select from where you want to buy. Now, this part here, we will also discuss on this part later. Purchase order, you already confirmed from which vendor that you're going to be buying and what are the things that you're going to get when you buy uh, when you buy from that vendor. Okay, and then you need to notify the vendor what are the purchase order uh, that is being executed. Vendor is going to execute the shipment, it's going to be sent, a uh, good receipt. So basically, you're going to mention that the item is already reached you, invoice receipt, and then you're going to get payment, uh, payment, uh, the not payment, the Yes, it's the payment, Pay, uh, the invoice receipt, and then you're going to be paying the vendor. Okay, now we're going to go through the situational, uh, situational that you currently facing in terms of when you do purchase requisition. Okay, now I'm going to type it in the chat. This situation here, 
we going to basically in the scope of scope of purchase scope of purchase is basically shopping not considering any sales shopping you need to buy let's say for example you need to buy some detergent okay something simpler some okay detergent okay so that is the thing that you in the scope of purchasing for you shopee detergent where do you buy it from not there yet how much detergent just one bottle okay now purchase requisition can anyone here give me the different situational of purchase requisition where you're going to start buying detergent okay just to make sure everyone know what is detergent right okay just to make sure dynamo you're, you're going to buy dynamo or something uh, still not really helpful somewhere. okay but you need okay it's a brand okay okay detergent is basically something that you use to wash your clothes okay now purchase requisition guess from where can it start where does the request comes from anyone Oh, I forgot to mention. Why? Why from me? Okay, because I asked you to buy detergent. Mothers need, okay. I forgot to mention one more thing. Scope of purchase. Scope of purchase is basically your house. If I didn't mention this type of scope, as someone's mentioned from me, from cleaner, from Dobby, from supermarket, okay. If it's inside your house, made request. Mm, can be. Mothers, yes. You also from your own, uh, for me, yes, from your own, uh, basically from your own inspection that you notice that. Uh, the detergent is running low, almost finished. So basically, it's only enough for another three more cycles inside the washing machine. So basically, you notice it's needed to be purchased. So it starts with purchase requisition. It can come from someone it, or it can come from you. Depends. Okay, now, vendor selection. How do you do this? In terms of when you want to buy a detergent for your house for your household use. Detergent, when I mention detergent here, is basically for washing clothes, not for floor, not for washing car, not for washing something else. This is for your washing machine. See the brand and price, compare brand and price, brand selection. Anything else other than brand and price? Because currently we are at this, um, we are, at the stage of vendor selection and you're going to buy detergent from Shopee. So what are you looking at? What ratings? Ratings of what? Customer review. Customer review, that is also another thing. But all of this is basically the next thing that you're supposed to do. Now is basically vendor selection. So what do you actually do inside Shopee? free shipping promotion okay i'm going to mention here what that you are currently doing of vendor selection is basically you are looking oh sorry i'm not at the long at the wrong screen okay search for vendor who sells detergent sellers that highest amount yes we are currently at the correct part here to chat comments are getting to the correct point vendor selection you want to see sellers yes you want to see your sellers 
your or basically I'm going to use a much more it's not a correct term that is a term that is much more aligned with SAP then list of vendors list of vendors you want to know which how many sellers are selling you are looking for let's say for example you are looking for jasmine there is a lot of what was that detergent being called dynamo is usually inside the uh, inside tv advertisement and there is this one detergent that usually shows an advertisement I don't remember the brand there, but if anyone here remember, you can just put it inside the chat. Okay, what happens here is basically uh, you select Materials that you use for selecting vendors, and I didn't notice one thing here: free shipping, promotion, review, company quality rating, brand. Ah, here this is the important part: price. Price is the number one. Usually, pricing is the number one select uh, criteria that is being judged when you want to select vendors. And then afterwards, you see the ratings, their delivery service, are they late, are they usually early, suddenly you order today, yesterday already came in, ah, marvellous. Okay, so after you already confirm from which vendor that you want to buy the detergent, you're going to be confirming it through purchase order. This is basically when you click on add to cart. And then the system is basically going to notify the vendor that is a new order is coming in. Okay, then vendor is going to be shipping your item. Okay, now the good thing about Shopee. Now, this is what, okay, there is a lot of bad things about Shopee. But this is one of the good things that I like about Shopee compared to Lazada. Okay, they have something called some sort of a good receipt function okay can anyone guess here how do how does shopee do this good receipt kind of function when you purchase something have a guess yes uh is that can you repeat that Uh, the the paper that they paste on our parcel, which is the as I know it is called uh, AWB, A will be okay. contain our information. Yes, uh, that is the uh, the delivery order. Okay, uh, one of the function that is looks like a good receipt function inside Shopee is that um, item receive release payment. Ke semua tak pernah shop, uh, ke semua tak pernah shopping kat Shopee? Nah. Okay, semua pernah kan? Nah. Okay, so basically, does Lazada have that function? No. I don't think so. Hmm. Not remember. Haven't used Lazada. <laughs> if let's say for example, okay. Uh, that is one of the things that I see that is the closest in term of good receipt function is basically the item that re the item needs to be at the customer premise the purchaser premise the item is already at your front door and then you click on that button item receive after the item receive then only the cust uh, the seller will get their money but the thing is your money has already been deducted it's either that money is received 
to the seller or not by just with a click of a button. And then what happens here is basically afterwards is that you invoice uh, that the vendor will send you an invoice and then you're going to be paying to the vendor. This is what happened inside pay uh, procure to pay process. So from purchase requisition, vendor selection, purchase order, notify vendor, and then vendor will be shipping item, good receipt, just to make sure that you have confirmed that the item is at your location, at your premises. Like what is, uh, okay. And then you're going to, uh, you're going to be invoiced and then you're going to pay. So that is the process of, uh, procure to pay. Now we're moving on to questions. Good receipt. What is the process inside sales and distribution that is similar to good receipt? Anyone? Sales and distribution. In here is being called material management is good receipt. In sales and distribution is being called good the issue good issue yes inside sales is being called good issues what happens when inside sales what happens when you done the good issue process your stock count is starting to decrease from 100 bicycles is going to be decreased by if for example deluxe stream bike after you click on the good issue it's basically going to reduce your stock by five for deluxe touring bike for here good receive is basically the same function when you click on good uh, when you settle on the good receipt process your stock count inside your warehouse will start to increase for unrestricted use same process it's just that in here for sales and uh, for sales and uh, sorry for material management inventory is going to be increased for sales and distribution inventory going to be reduced okay so that is the overall process of material management purchase requisition these are basically some of the description that us about purchase requisition and internal document requesting for purchase this is basically what is going to look like and also what are the information that is showing for a purchase requisition okay notice up here even though it's being mentioned per create purchase order yes it's the document some the document name sometimes could be confusing because of its why is it being called create purchase order why is doesn't it being called create purchase requisition okay um that is just okay SAP is okay it's confusing okay but the thing is this is an example screen of purchase requisition so these are some of the information that is inside your purchase requisition conditional master uh, conditional master data this one is basically those things that are related to the extra services extra discounts that you may have for that certain purchasing okay requisition source it could be internally or it could be external internal sourcing requirement it could come from okay it's not just you need to buy from vendors outside the company let's say for example um requisition could come from internally inside the company let's say for example your san diego plant is running low on bicycles or running low on certain materials so you can basically do purchase requisition from another plant uh, from either miami or um, dallas depends on what you need but basically from there there are basically going through this the same process again just meant just that is going to be something sort, sort of move movement of goods but that one you're going to see it later internal source source list you want to see where does the material comes from outline agreement this part here is just stating some of the elements in terms of when you are doing purchasing but in terms of for now we're going to be focusing on what you're going to be experiencing inside the lab exercise these are just certain different different situations that you're going to be 
it's not that you're going to be involved with it. that could possibly happen when doing purchasing in the real world okay request for quotation this happens during the vendor selection before the vendor selection is basically before you select before you have a list of vendor selection okay you're going to have a few price uh, a few prices let's say for example you have three different vendors okay how is going to happen is basically you're going to have purchase requisition and then from there you're going to open for tender bidding where vendors will be coming inside your company and offer their services let's say for example here we're going to basically we're going to remove the detergent the detergent part we're going to move back to gbi let's say for example you want to buy knee pads so you advertise it on the net okay we are looking for vendors to buy knee pads so what happens here they going uh, let's say for example there are three different vendors the vendor a b c or basically here is vendor one two three so from here they're going to approach you they're going to quote you they're going to say okay we can provide you with knee pad with this pricing vendor two we're going to provide you knee pads with this pricing then the tree also is going to be doing the same thing. We're going to provide you knee pads with this pricing. So what happens on your side is basically you're going to be evaluating. Evaluate from which vendor that you're going to be buying. Buy it through purchase order for the vendor that is already been chosen and for the rest, a reject letter. Well, that is how uh, companies do business. Sometimes you get the business, sometimes you don't. Okay, quotation from vendor basically is a single document, not really important. Okay, when evaluating vendor, these are some of the different things that you can evaluate. But usually, people will focus more on pricing. Quality is later, delivery is later. This one here on quality and delivery, you can basically raise, um, I don't remember why is it being called, it's basically something uh, that is like you uh, if I remember the term I will feedback to you basically this is a part where you can raise some sort of issue with the vendor is that okay pricing is correct but the delivery is is late the quality of the goods is not that good so basically you can raise some sort of an issue with the vendor so that the items can be sent back so that you can get new items or basically the delivery is late so you can get a much more cheaper price for that certain order depends but here is basically a list of what are the things that are being evaluated supports maximum of 99 main criteria for evaluating vendors and 20 sub criteria we're not going to be looking at the 99 and 20 we're just going to be comparing in terms of pricing during the lab exercise the lowest one will be accepted as the vendor for knee pad uh, look forward during the lab exercise okay purchase order to confirm that you're going to be purchasing from that vendor similar with sales and distribution it can be referenced from previous document that was created okay this is our purchase order looks uh, the structure the output can be either printer email or something this is what how SCP does their purchase order. So basically good receipt, but notify vendor, vendor shipment, and then good receipt. This is the process that we already, that you already heard me explain uh, during the process slide. Okay, good receipt is just want to make sure that the materials uh, came into your company. It depends on how you want to process that good. It's either you want to put it directly after you receive the goods, let's say for example, for GBI, you're going to be uh ordering knee pad so from there is either you can just put it inside your warehouse say okay we receive 100 knee pad sell it immediately or basically what you can do is basically during good receipt this is during good receipt you receive 100 knee pads you're going to take random samples and then you're going to check for the quality that is going to be blocked for why it's not going to be inside unrestricted use this is the different things that is in terms of good receipt Material movement, where is it being kept inside your warehouse? So notice here there are some different mid movement type. That one 
still we are not really concerned of on this we are more concerned of what you going to be doing inside your leg exercise okay the effects invoicing process so basically you have your purchase you receive the goods and then you're going to be invoice how much you need to pay okay and then you're going to make payment to vendor is usually this thing that you need to be concerned of what are the payment method from which bank item to be paid calculation and also if you are um, printing it through what medium that you need to be using okay this is talking about the finance impact of uh, good receipt in purchase to pay mm, nothing here nothing here okay i'm guessing i already passed okay so basically that is that is about material management